previously on the Aruba Switching Story. In the first part of this episode, we learned about resiliency in AOS CX. Next, we'll have Vincent and Steve return and talk about Virtual Switching Extension, or VSX, which is Aruba's high availability, high availability solution for campus core and ag switches, as well as data center spine and leaf switches. So we've seen the resiliency of the software stack at the operating system level. What about at the circuit level, if we get one link that fouls between the campus core and the data center where the application resides? Could you please show us what happens when we lose a link, Vincent? Yes, with a great pleasure. So let's go back to the diagram. Uh, here are four circuits between the campus core layer and the data center border VTAP switches. So which one do you want me to cut? So oh, can you catch, uh, you know, can you uh, stop the one that's actually carrying the traffic? Yes, sure. But thanks to UDP being used for VXLAN tunneling, there is a very good distribution of the traffic flow over the four available circuits. All of them shall be used due to the various flows we set up in our XIA test. So let's see this traffic distribution with uh, network analytics engine monitoring agents. So we're going to check um, how the, the traffic is distributed across those, uh, those links. So for that, I'm going to connect on those uh, campus core switches on the web UI and click on analytics. And here you see, here I've got an agent uh, on, the, on the top that is called 1150, another one called 1151, and the same on the campus core two. And this is actually the, the packet per seconds or per interval that I'm receiving on and sending on that link exactly here as well. So these are the NAE scripts that are running on each switch and we'll hear more about them in a while when Yash explains how it helps operators to troubleshoot. But for now, where did you get those scripts from, Vincent? They were simply directly downloaded from the Aruba Solution Exchange uh, portal that we have here. But let's hold here for NAE as Yash will explain uh, it in details. We see uh, here the, uh, those uh, circuits that are loaded. All of them are loaded, but we can also check on the CLI on the first core switch, for instance, with uh, a show uh, LLDP neighbor where I can check that uh, 8325 3A and 3B is uh, connected. So this is on interface 1150 and 1151. I can also uh, look at uh, how I can reach uh, the loopback uh, IP address for uh, the VTEP, so which is uh, this uh, the IP address that is used for uh, the VXLAN tunnel, which is 192.16s.1.33 here. So how this, uh, this, this loopback is actually uh, uh, seen. So I can do that with a show IP route on that first switch. So let's check that. And as you can see, it is uh, seen behind interface 1150 and 1151, thanks to equal cost multipathing of the underlay OSPF routing. So I can also do a show uh, interface 1150, thanks to the, um, the improvement we made in 10.7, you can now see the rate that we've got on that interface and you see that interface is loaded. So uh, I propose that we shut down this specific interface. And before doing so, I'm going to put the, uh, the video just to, to check if there is any video impact. And obviously we'll do that as well for the XR. So we saw a little bit of impact. Let's see on XR how it was. We saw here, Actually, uh, something like you can check with me, uh, Steve. Well, I'm, I'm reading that, Vincent, as what well, is under, it's just over 218 milliseconds. Yeah, it's 
218 milliseconds reported by XIA, which correspond to the time for the next ECMP route to be selected to reach the VTEP next hop. So uh, this can be reflected as well on the NAE uh, graph that we just uh, uh, exposed before. You can see here that uh, this interface is now shut, so there is no uh, traffic any longer on, on that one, and you will see a, uh, an extra load on the other circuits that are here. Fantastic. So the link failure has had almost no impact on the application running on the network. So what about a bigger failure, like a complete switch failure, Vincent? Uh, let's turn on one CX switch in the V6 cluster of the border of VTEP uh, that time. By VSX, I mean, just to make sure everybody is following well, when we use these acronyms, you're referring to the Aruba virtual switch extension technology. That is correct. Okay, um, so before the demo then, could you tell us a bit more about it? This is VSX and why the technology is important for our customers. Right, so let's um, consider uh, a bit of a reminder for, for, VSF, for VSX. So we have the, those uh, following main component for VSX uh, technology. We have the inter-switch link, the ISL, that interconnects the VSX primary to the VSX secondary. Multiple synchronization will happen over this ISL, like MAC address table synchronization, ARP entries, to name a few. And also configuration synchronization from the primary to the secondary. Then we have the keep alive mechanism to detect a split in the cluster to protect the cluster on, of a split brain. Of course, we've got uh, multi-chassis link aggregation for data plane virtualization. We call that VSX lag. And the active gateway function for hosting the virtual IP address of each subnet default gateway. This virtual switching extension provides layer two multi-chassis link aggregation as a virtualization technique in order to simplify the network data plane to remove the need of spanning tree. Another very important architecture principle of VSX is that both VSX nodes of the VSX cluster run an independent control plane, each with their own router ID. So here, the VSX primary node runs its own OSPF process and BGP process. Likewise, the VSX secondary node runs its own. VSX provides as well many operational benefits, like configuration synchronization from the VSX primary to the VSX secondary through what is called VSX sync mechanism, the ability to perform a show command from a single node. So for instance, from the secondary, I can, uh, I can start a command to display what the primary see. Uh, so that is uh, very important for operation. And the live or upgrade orchestration that we will see in a demonstration. Thank you, Vincent and Steve, and taking the time to demonstrate Virtual switch Switching Extension, or VSX. In our next episode, we're going to hear from Vincent and Steve who are going to show us how to do a VSX live upgrade, as well as how VSX behaves in the event of a node failure. Mm -hmm.